Okay, uh, William Claiborne, one of the three um, that I'm trying to lump all together because they knew each other and they were there in Jamestown at its founding, at the founding of the Virginia Colony all at the same time. So, William Claiborne is born in England in 1600, in the year 1600, born in Kent. And uh, he also comes from modest beginnings. Um, he's educated at Cambridge and at the age of 21, he manages to get this plum job as a land surveyor. Um, in the new colony of Virginia. So he rides over on the same ship as Sir Francis Wyatt, who's heading, heading over at the same time um, for his first governor's gig over there. Um, he'll be the first royal governor of Virginia, if you recall. So he's on his way over. And so they arrive, both of them, Sir Francis Wyatt and William Claiborne, arrive in Jamestown in 1621. And um, According to William Claiborne's employment contract uh, from, from the Virginia Company at that time, um, he's to receive a 200-acre land grant and a salary of 30 pounds a year, and, and then he gets any fees that are paid by the settlers who need to have their land grant surveyed. Um, now what happens is just a year later, in 1622, the Jamestown Massacre occurs. Now, the Jamestown Massacre is is a big deal um you can just type it in to you can google it and you'll see there are videos about it and everything so um what happens is chief opakanana opachan opachan opachanana what is it chief opachanakana that's it chief opachanakana uh who's the chief of the powhatan tribe at the time he basically plans this attack and what a bunch of Powhatan Braves come into Jamestown and they come unarmed. So they've got, you know, they're coming in, they, otherwise if they were armed, they wouldn't get past the, the walls. So what they do is they come in with deer, turkey, fish, fruits, all this stuff, and they act like they're coming in to trade and um, to trade with the settlers. And then once they get in there, they just go in and they grab any tools or weapons that are lying around and they kill any settlers they could find. Women, children, everybody they can find. They end up killing 347 people, which at this time represented over a quarter of the population of Jamestown. And um, at the same time that they're killing all these people, um, the Powhatan tribe is doing this up and down the colony. So there's not just Jamestown at this point. Uh, there, there are other small settlements, and they almost wipe out other settlements. Um, so what ends up happening, Claiborne survives the attack. William Claiborne survives the attack, and um, he is serving, he serves as Governor Wyatt's military aide, and so he's the one, William Claiborne's the one who mounts uh, retaliatory raids against the Powhatan Indians and he does this for over 10 years. I mean, they, they keep having to fight uh, the Powhatans uh, for over, he ends up doing it for over 10 years. Now, during this time, he's still doing his job as a surveyor, but um, within four years of him getting the job in 1621, he's already, his, his income's already increased. He's now getting 1,100 acres a year and he gets 60 pounds, so he's doubled his, his salary and then, and then of course all the fees he gets from surveying. Um, in 1626, so only five years after he has arrived in Jamestown, he is appointed Secretary of State of the Virginia Colony. Um, and he serves in that post for 11 years, so quite a while. And during this time he becomes a tobacco planter um, on all this property that he's slowly um, amassing. He becomes a tobacco planter and then in 1627 he um, he begins trading furs uh, with the Susquehannock Indians, and but they're way up north. They're north above Chesapeake Bay. And so it's so far that he decides he's gonna build this trading post um, kind of up that way so that uh, he, can, he can work from there. So he builds this trading post. He, he basically goes and he claims the land and he builds this trading post uh, up there on what, what he calls Kent Island. Uh, he names it after his hometown, right? So um, 
this would be the start of something, just a, a kerfuffle that would just last his entire life. So he builds this trading post on Kent Island. So while he is building this trading post, um, over in England um, at this time, King Charles I is granting this land and this region to Lord Baltimore um, for the creation of the Maryland colony. So when Calvert, that's his name, that is Lord Baltimore's name, um, so when Calvert comes over to America to claim the colony that he's been given the permission to claim by the king, uh, Claiborne refuses to give over Kent Island. Claiborne's like, no, I was here first. I built this trading post. I'm not giving it to you. I'm not giving you this island. So they fight a few skirmishes. Um, nobody, nobody ends up winning. Uh, so finally, Claiborne sails to England uh, to plead his case before the king. While he's gone... Uh, Calvert takes control of of his Kent Island of Kent Island. Uh, so the king ends up. He goes all the Claiborne goes all the way over to England. The king ends up siding with Lord Baltimore <coughs> and um, turns down Claiborne. You would think that Claiborne would say, "Okay, you know that's the end of it," but no. Um, so Claiborne comes back and he serves as the treasurer of the colony in 1642. So at this moment in time, 1642, you have three of your ancestors all working together right at the same time. So you've got Sir Francis Wyatt as governor. You have got Richard Henry Lee um, serving as secretary of state at the time. And you have William Claiborne, who's working as treasurer. Um, you know, he had already been, William Claiborne had already been secretary of state for over 10 years, just a few years before that. So, um... In 1644, so this is 22 years after the initial Jamestown massacre, <coughs> the same chief, Chief Okchenakana of the Powhatan tribe, the same chief who's got to be getting up there by now, he's got to be getting pretty old, he, um, he is behind another Powhatan attack, um, and this one results in the death of about 500 colonists, but by this time, um, that's still a big deal, but that only represents about 10% of the population. So the colony has gotten quite a bit bigger, so it's not as big of a hit, but it's still devastating. Um, and so Claiborne would be put in charge of, again, of fighting off these Powhatan attacks. And so Claiborne manages to capture uh, the chief, finally. And while the chief is being held in Jamestown, in the prison in Jamestown, one of the guards kill him. So um, that's the end of the chief. Um, in the meantime, <clears throat> Claiborne never stops fighting over this Kent Island, right? That he, <laughs> this trading post that he built. So in 1645, um, Protestant settlers lead a rebellion against the Catholic settlers in Maryland. So these Protestant settlers <clears throat> are fighting always with the Catholic settlers. So Claiborne joins them. He's like, hey, you know, I'll get on this, you know, bandwagon. So he joins them and he gets control of his Kent Island again, but only for about a year before Calvert, Lord Baltimore, comes back and wins it back again. So he loses it again. Um, then in 1651, Claiborne and a partner of his, Richard Bennett, they overthrow the entire government of Maryland and they take control of the colony for several years. Um, by this time, Oliver Cromwell's over there in England, and he returns Maryland to the Calvert family. So, Claiborne loses it again. And, um, <coughs> Claiborne ends up serving as Secretary of State again from 1652 to 1660. And, um, so during this time, Claiborne is working with Richard Henry Lee, and Claiborne's a Protestant. And a Puritan sympathizer. So uh, he and Richard Richard Lee negotiate the surrender of Virginia to the English Parliament to Cromwell in 1652 after those English Civil Wars. Um, also during this time, during uh, William Claiborne's life, he's also serving in the House of Vir the House the Virginia House of Burgesses. Um, up until his death, he lives to the age of. 77. I mean, so a lot longer than Richard Henry Lee, who only lives to like 47. 
So uh, he ends up living until the age of 77 and never, never ceases trying to get this Kent Island back. I mean, there's a letter that he's writing to the king <laughs> all the way, like, at his death. He's still writing trying to get this Kent Island back. And he doesn't. But uh, he ends up dying in his plantation, uh, which was called Roman Coke. And um, he and his wife, Elizabeth, William Claiborne and his wife, Elizabeth Butler, uh, they have six children, which is relatively small for that, you know, small size family in that time. Um, and this would also, the Claiborne line would also be a very, a very large number of descendants, um, including like a later governor of, I, I think it's Virginia, I mean, much later, like Liz Claiborne. She's, she's a descendant along with you guys. Okay. 